us safe. We're grateful for doctors and nurses who promote our health. Lord, we are grateful for people we often forget, those who collect our garbage, those who um, work on our streets. We know that we all work together to create a better Arkansas. And so, God, grant these men and women during this session the ability uh, to discern wisdom, to promote the welfare of all those who call Arkansas their home. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Madam Secretary, please call the roll of the Senate. Boyd, Bryant, Caldwell, Chesterville, Clark, Kroll, Davis, Dees, Dismay, Dotson, English, Flippo, Flowers, Gilmore, Hammer, Hester, Hickey, Hill, Irvin, Blake Johnson, Mark Johnson, King, Letty, Love, McKee, Murdoch, Hayden, Penzo, Teddy, Rice, Stone, Stubblefield's on the lead, Sullivan, Tucker, Wallace. Representatives, please indicate your presence by pushing your yellow present button. Prepare the machine, Madam Clerk. Representatives, please indicate your presence by pushing your yellow present button. Cast the ballot, Madam Clerk. With 99 members present, the chair sees a quorum. Are there any requests for leave? Representative McNair, for what purpose? Leave for Representative Blanny Fight. Is leave granted for Representative Lady Fight. So noted. The President Pro Temp appoints the following senators as the committee to escort Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders to the House Chamber. Senator Breanne Davis, Senator Matt McKee, and Senator Jim Petty. Speaker appoints the following representatives as the committee to escort Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders to the House Chamber. Representative Marcus Richmond, Chairperson. Representative Lane Jean. Representative Jeff Wardlaw. Representative John Eubanks. Representative Kenneth Ferguson. Representative Fred Allen. Representative Francis Cavanaugh. Representative Jimmy Gasway. Representative Sonny Eubanks Barker. Representative David Ray. Representative John Milligan.
Mr. Sergeant at Arms, for what purpose? The minutes of the Governor of the Great State of Arkansas, the Honorable Sir Huckabee Sanders. Mr. Sergeant at Arms, please admit the Governor.
So we charted a new course, and that meant change. Sometimes, a lot of it. And it made a few people uncomfortable. But we are building a better, a safer, and a stronger Arkansas. In fact, our work is making Arkansas a model for the nation. Our priorities are reflected in the budget that we put before us. Hard as it may be, I made a promise to the people of Arkansas that we would work to slow the growth of government. And with the help of my cabinet, we have kept it. This year's budget increases spending by only 1.76%, far below the 3% year-over-year average that we have had in recent years. If you send me a budget that funds critical services for Arkansans while slowing the growth of government, I will sign it. responsibly phasing out our state income tax and letting every Arkansan keep more of their hard-earned money. <laughs> tax cuts are just some of the bipartisan legislation that we have come together to pass. We enacted the PROTECT Act, Death by Delivery, universal licensing reform, social media protections for kids, and much, much more, all with support from both sides of the aisle. Frankly, there are people outside of this chamber, and maybe even a few inside, who want to distract us from these common sense reforms. I beg of you, do not let them. There is a lot of wisdom in the marble halls of the Capitol. But I've learned even more from spending time with people from Magnolia to Mulberry and Benton to Bent Bible, which is why I've traveled more than 16,000 miles in Arkansas last year and hosted more than 250 events. I remember holding a town hall in Heber Springs. I was taking questions, and I was surprised when half of the crowd sounded like they had come from the Soprano Central Casting. I thought, do people from the Northeast just have a way of talking over everyone? Or do we have our own little Italy on the shores of Greer's Ferry? Turns out, the answer is yes and yes. As I mingled with the crowd afterward, I figured out the reason. These newcomers love our freedom-loving state and our great people. And they're not just in Heber. I've met transplants from everywhere I have gone. We are even getting a former Kentucky Wildcat in Fayetteville as I speak. <laughs> Welcome to Arkansas. We've added 21,000 new Arkansans last year alone. These newcomers are joined by companies from literally all over the country and all over the world. I traveled to Europe and Asia to pitch businesses on Arkansas, and I'm here to report they <coughs> liked what they heard. Companies proposed more than $1 billion in new investments last year. Companies like Raphael, Raytheon, and Lockheed Martin are turning Camden, Arkansas into the arsenal of freedom, supplying Israel's Iron Dome, America's Marine Corps and service members across the globe. The So Falcon is adding 800 new jobs right here in Little Rock. And Mississippi County is now the top still producing county in America. Yeah. Arkansas Crew is sitting. 
while their arms is helping us defend our rights with the expansion in Fort Smith. And companies are making investments left and right in South Arkansas lithium. Our national economy is dragging. Blue states are shrinking, but Arkansas is roaring ahead. And that starts with education, which was my top priority since taking office. I work with this body, this group, to pass Arkansas Learns and launch the largest transformation of Arkansas education in modern history and the largest single investment in our public schools ever before. Before this year, our teachers were some of the worst paid in the country. In many districts, there wasn't a single educator making more than $50,000 a year. Learns raised starting teacher pay from $36,000 to $50,000 and gave every single teacher in the state a $2,000 raise. Smith last week to announce that EFA applications for next year 
are now open to more families. The children of first responders, law enforcement, veterans, and any student attending a D-rated school. In just the first day of the application period, we had more than 1,800 new signups. New students looking for an opportunity. And those numbers have only climbed since. And I'm happy to report that 25% of those applicants are the children of active duty military personnel and our state's veterans. They deserve to know that we are cheering and rooting for them. <laughs> Educational freedom is the least that we can do for those who put everything on the line for our freedom. This time next year, we will have universal education freedom for the first time in Arkansas history. <laughs> Send me a budget that continues to fully fund the LEARNS Act and I will sign it. <laughs> Education was my first priority, but it was far from my only one. For too many Arkansans, the thought of taking your kids to the park or stopping at a gas station at night is a scary one. The reason is simple. Some of our leaders think it is compassionate to coddle criminals. Frankly, they need a reality check. I've been to the southern border, and I've seen how Joe Biden's compassion lets the cartels traffic millions of people and deadly drugs into our country. Just last week, Arkansas State Police seized half a pound of fentanyl in a routine traffic stop. That is enough to kill a hundred thousand people. A town that is bigger than all of the population of Fort Smith, Arkansas. And we've read far too many reports here in Arkansas about what violent repeat offenders who were sentenced to decades in prison let out early and then go on to commit other crimes. This isn't compassion. It's cruelty, and we've had enough. Yes, sir. Last week, I thanked 40 Arkansas Guardsmen before they headed out on a mission to our southern border. They know the gravity of the security and the humanitarian crisis that we are facing, and every single one of them volunteered to go on that mission, many for their second time. Last year, the legislature passed and I signed Death by Delivery, which charges fentanyl dealers with murder if the drugs they traffic cause a fatal overdose. And we came together again to pass the PROTECT Act. No more catch and release of violent repeat offenders. In Arkansas, we will keep the most dangerous criminals off of our streets.
came across an older man sitting in his vehicle and out of gas. Bird sat with the man as he called a family member who couldn't come to pick the gentleman up until the next morning. So Trooper Bird drove the man to the nearest hotel. And when they got there, he found out that the elderly gentleman had no money. So he paid $100 out of his own pocket for the man to have a warm room for the night. Brandon felt like he was just doing his job. But the reality of the situation soon sunk in. It was dark and it was cold. The man had no gas. If Bird had not been there, the man likely would have frozen to death. Trooper Bird is with us today, and I want to thank him and all of our law enforcement for their service to our state. to use their addictive products. 
I disagree. And Arkansas will lead on this just like we have done on education and public safety because we have to. because our children's future depends on it. We banned indoctrination in our schools. We got rid of nonsense words like birthing person and men in women's sports. We focused on improving the quality of life. My husband, Brian, who is here with me and my three kids are spearheading the Natural State Initiative to grow outdoor recreation and tourism already we're smashing tourism records left and right. Our tourism revenue in each month of 2023 has already set a new record, and 2024 is on track to break records again. We live in one of the most beautiful states in America, and it's time that the rest of the world finds out about it too. We're just over a year past the March 31st tornadoes that I mentioned earlier. And with us today is Pastor Eddie Miller from Jacksonville. I met Pastor Miller the day after his church was destroyed in the storm. And when I visited, most of his entire structure in church was completely gone. But his faith stood strong. Pastor Miller led us deep into the sanctuary where the roof had completely caved in. Miraculously, there was one wall still standing. And on that wall hung not one, not two, but three wooden crosses. Pastor Miller, my husband Brian, a few local legislators, we put our arms around each other in that moment. And we pray. We pray for strength. We pray for resilience. We pray that this community, though bent, would not break. A year later, by the grace of God and with the sweat of his congregation, Pastor Miller's church walls are back up. Pastor Miller, you could be recognized.
Motion, please. Let's hear your motion. Mr. Speaker, I move that we adjourn today's joint session of the 94th General Assembly. That's a proper motion. It's not debatable. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The joint session is adjourned. The House will reconvene in five minutes.